If you've seen any of our past videos, it's no surprise that here at Planifax we're big fans of active transportation. It's a fun and healthy way of getting around. Sure, that's nice and all, but here at Planifax we're all about the green. Like the environment? No, like that cold hard cash baby. Make it rain! When it comes to active transportation, planners, environmentalists, and health professionals all support an increase in healthy, cleaner ways of getting around. See, there you go again, putting the majority of your emphasis on silly little things like the environment or health. When's the last time the environment paid for a bike lane? It is true that the biggest barrier to active transportation is infrastructure, and good sidewalks, bike lanes, trails, and greenways are necessary to get people out of their cars and using active transportation. But there's also a solid financial case for investing in active transportation infrastructure. So pedal it back a bit, and I'll explain it to you. On average, a bike lane only costs $20,000 per kilometer to build. This might seem like a lot of money, but not when you compare it to the cost of building roads. Just widening an already existing street to handle more traffic costs an average of $1.3 million per kilometer. That might be the most inefficient way to spend tax dollars, as the majority of that road space is occupied by car engines and empty seats. Because active transportation infrastructure doesn't have giant metal boxes driving over it all the time, it has to be repaired and replaced far less often than roads. This means that theoretically our bike lanes could outlive all of us. Keep in mind that this does not account for weather, which tends to do its own fair share of damage to infrastructure. But wait, if we build more active transportation infrastructure and more people use it, then we'll have to spend more money to maintain it. <clears throat> well, yes, but even then the cost is just pennies on the dollar. In all of the Netherlands, only 6% of money spent on road infrastructure is put towards bicycle facilities, yet cycling makes up 27% of all journeys. If active transportation infrastructure costs less to build, costs less to maintain, it's better for the environment and it's healthier, why are municipalities building more of it? Well, politics are often influenced by money, and businesses have money, so they often get a say in what councils will or won't approve. Oh, and businesses hate active transportation infrastructure. Well, actually, they hate giving up room for cars, and they have a good reason to be worried about roads being narrowed or giving up parking spaces. I mean, you gotta be thinking about your customers. It's true, but oftentimes business owners overestimate the amount of their customers that come by car. Studies from all over the world have shown that business owners underestimate the number of customers that use active transportation and typically overestimate the number of customers that drive by 100%. A study conducted in Toronto found that 78% of retail visitors wanted to see active transportation improvements in their neighbourhood and that customers who arrive by foot and bicycle visit them most often and spend the most money per month. Now that I think about it, business areas that have great active transportation infrastructure do perform very well. A worldwide study found that retail areas that see improved active transportation infrastructure experience a 49% upward trend in retail turnover. One of the best examples is Lodi, California, where 20 years ago, the city completed a $4.5 million pedestrian retrofit to widen sidewalks, add bump outs, and streetscape elements. Since then, the project has been directly linked to the establishment of 60 new businesses, a decrease in the vacancy rates from 18% to 6%, and a 30% increase in sales tax revenue. But this is only one example out of a dozens of projects that show how increasing active transportation in an area also increases business revenue or value. And don't think that you need California beaches to benefit from active transportation. Dozens of countries with similar climates to Nova Scotia have very high percentages of active transportation users, including Denmark, Germany, Sweden, and the Netherlands. And the benefit of good active transportation infrastructure doesn't just end with increases in revenue. It frees up remaining parking spots by reducing parking demand, reduces congestion around businesses and makes the area more inviting, and it encourages your employees to be more active, resulting in less sick days and lower health claims. But the biggest reason for businesses to support active transportation infrastructure is a changing market demographic. Younger generations are moving away from private automobiles, with fewer North American teens even bothering to get their driver's license. We also need to consider our own aging population. Like, how long will our pensioners be able to safely drive? Or how many of them will be able to keep up with car-associated costs? With the current clientele aging, future clientele being less interested in visiting car-rented areas, and everyone starting to become a little more frugal, business owners can find themselves left behind for more hip competitions. If you want to help your community or business by increasing active transportation, make sure to show up and give your support at public meetings. And let your local councillor or politician know that active transportation is important to you as a voter and a constituent. 
And remember, the next time you visit a local business, let them know how much you enjoy being able to walk or bike there, or comment with the lack of active transportation infrastructure. It's important to remind business owners, politicians, friends, and even neighbors that customers walk, bike, and take the bus. So remember, get out there and spend that money. Oh no. <laughs>